Good morning, everyone. Morning, Mrs. Lizzie and the group. Please remember to complete the register. I have posted it on the chat. Uh, you should be able to access it now. How do I access it when I'm using the cell phone in the, the chat, says Lizzie? Uh, here, on your phone, probably you need to hover and then it will show some menu and then look at the top if they don't have something like a chat or a bubble, a speech bubble that looks almost like a, uh, what you call it, WhatsApp, WhatsApp bubble. I see something like I on the top there. I don't know if it is, but it doesn't open. Um, <coughs> okay. I will share that on the WhatsApp and then you can. Um, if if maybe oh. with the same. Uh, I don't know because I have a laptop now. When I try to open the laptop, would I be able to access this link? Yes, you should be able to. Let me try it because I have never used it. I'm new on this uh, technological issues. I also have a flu. Yeah. Uh, Audra, let me, you let will me close to... this and op try to open the, what, the, the, the laptop. Yeah. I will request my son to help me. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let's start with today's session. Uh, good morning and welcome to your eighth session of our ACALIT, uh, looking at the basic statistical literacies. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, how we tackle questions relating to continuous normal distribution. So looking um, at the schedule for June, knowing also for sure that you guys are, some of you have some semester modules, you might be writing exams, but uh, we can dedicate, dedicate the two hour session every morning to do stats as well. So looking at June, I'm going to look at uh, sampling distribution uh, the following week, and then we're going to look at confidence interval, and then the last session we'll look at hypothesis testing. And I think I can give you some break so that you can relax, and then we will come back probably in August or September um, after the uh, semester two registrations, and then we can start Again, with the Akalit, I'm not sure, but if we feel there is a need to continue, uh, we can continue. I have no problem. It's because you guys are writing exams and all that. And yeah, but because statistics is a year module, so there's nothing stopping us from continuing with the work, uh, with me helping you understand your work better. Okay. Do you have any questions, comments, or queries before we start with today's session? And I hope you do have your tables, your statistical tables, because we're going to be using the statistical table. And today, at least, we're using similar tables. So whether uh, you're doing 16, 10, 15, 10, or 15, or 1, we will be using the same table or a similar table. Okay, so there are no questions, right? Just want to close most of the things I've opened. And just 
I'm going to stop sharing again and start sharing again. I want to share my entire screen because I want to talk between the two of uh, my <coughs> PowerPoint slides and also the statistical tables. Okay. I hope you are able to see my screen. So we can start with today's session. So like I said today, we're going to be looking at continuous normal distribution and the requirements for you to be able to do this successfully. We need statistical tables. We're going to use some formulas and we also need a calculator. So you should have all those three things ready. By the end of the session today, you should be able to learn the basic concepts of normal distribution. You should be able to know how to compute probabilities from a normal distribution, especially when we're looking at different types of probabilities that we're calculating where the Z value is less than or it's greater than or it is between. We should be able to find the probability using formulas or even tables. What is a continuous probability distribution? It comes from uh, that distribution or the probability we will calculate from a continuous variable. And we know from chapter one that you would have studied in your modules, uh, they actually introduce you to the types of variables. And I think as part of Akalit, we also did do the types of variables as part of our session. So you should by now know what continuous variables are, which are the variables that can assume any value in a cont uh, continuum, which is a value that can either be measured or counted. Or continuous will be those that are measured. And it can take any, uh, any value. And that is a value that is not counted. So sorry, I, I said continuous is any value that can be counted. Continuous are values that can be measured, not counted. The counted one are the discrete and we dealt with the discrete variables um, the past week as well. So examples of continuous variables can be like finding the thickness of an item, or, uh, looking at the width, looking at the length of the of an item or the height of um, an item or a building, temperature of a solution, um, time required to complete an assignment or a task. Um, as long as it's something that you are measuring, you can call that a continuous variable. And <clears throat> this can potentially take on any value depending on the ability to precisely and accurately measure those uh, items. For example, uh, measuring a building, you know that you will need a tape to measure the, how, how big the square meters and the, all those things. And you need to make sure that they are as, as accurate as possible. So when we talk about distribution, we know from the discrete distribution, we saw how the discrete distribution looks like. So in terms of normal distribution, it can be a very normal distribution and we can visualize the data by using this type of a chart, which looks like a belly type chart. And there can be different types of normal distribution. And those different charts, you can find them by varying the values of your mean and your standard deviation. And remember, the mean and the standard deviation, we also know what those are because we spoke about them in the first few chapters of your study module, where it's part of your measures of central location and measures of variation. So by varying those two variables, you can look at different types of your normal distribution. And what do we mean by that? So we know that with a normal distribution, it takes this type of a belly 
type of a chart. And when we move or when we shift or increase the number of um, variables that we have, or we, we not the number of variables, the, the number of um, the data that we have and we calculate the mean. If we increase or if our mean increases or our mean becomes larger, then the graph will, ch will shift to the right. If it's smaller, the graph will shift to the left uh, because to the left are your smaller values, right are your bigger values. In terms of your standard deviation, when you calculate um, the standard deviation, it will tell you whether your graph will be flat or tall, or it will move up or down, because the standard deviation tells you how far apart your values are from the mean. So we know that if in the middle it is our mean, which is the middle part, if the standard deviation increases and goes, therefore the, the chart will also flatten out because this line will become like bigger on the side. So this standard deviation of the first original chart, you can see that it is small and this standard deviation here, it will be huge. And similar, if it is narrow, let's assume that this will be, I don't know how to draw, so bear with me. I didn't like drawing even at school. So it, this will happen. No man, I don't want it to be the same size as the original one. Let's change it again. If you look at this standard deviation, you can see that it is even smaller. So then the taller your chart, the narrower your standard deviation will be. That tells you the spread of your data as well. So that is how you can interrogate or look at the different types of your normal distribution shape as well. So if your, if your normal distribution moves from where it was to this side, therefore it means our mean has increased. And if it moves this way, therefore it means the mean value has decreased or it's small and in terms of this in terms of the standard deviation we talk about being narrow or, or being flat when it is narrow it means we have a small standard deviation and when it is flat we have a large standard deviation. All right. So when we have continuous variables, sometimes <clears throat> uh, your data can be skewed. Remember, we also spoke about the skewness of your data, whether it can be positively skewed or negatively skewed. So when your data is skewed, you cannot infer back your results to the population if you're doing some analysis and insights and you want to talk about the population and all that. So in order for us to use that data, which is negatively skewed or positively skewed, we can standardize the information so that we are able to infer back the results when we're doing inferential statistics, infer back the results to the population. Sometimes in order for us to understand the outliers and the extreme values, we can also standardize the values to understand the impact of the outliers on the data that we have. So to do that, we use um, a Z score or Z standardized normal distribution. In some cases, they call it the Z score. In some cases, we call it standardized normal distribution. So you will see that you might see somewhere it is used interchangeably to say this is a Z score, this is done. In this purpose, we're just going to call it the Z score, right? When continuing. 
So what we do with the z-score is we take your original values, we transform them into a z-standardized value or unit. And this standardized unit always has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. And that is the property of a normal distribution. This does not mean that you will not get questions where they have given you the mean and the standard deviation, but those are not standardized normal distribution values. We need to standardize them. And to standardize them, we're going to use the Z-score, the Z-score formula in order to convert our mean and standard deviation into standardized normal distribution, or in order to transform our uh, values that we get from our analysis into a standardized form, which will take a form of a zero mean and a one standard deviation. So, so far, what we have spoken about is that normal distribution is a belly curve, uh, a belly curve shape graph. It is symmetrical. It means the mean, the median, and the mode are the same. But you, normally we don't also use the mode, but we can always say the mean and the median are equal, are the same. So the mean and the median of the data should be the same for it to be normally distributed, or we can say it is symmetrical. So we know that the location is to be determined by the mean because the mean is one of the measure of central location or central tendency. It tells you the location of your data and the spread is calculated by means of using the uh, standard deviation. Sometimes when you answer the question, they might not give you the standard deviation, but they might give you the variance. And we all know that the variance is the square root of your standard deviation or your standard deviation is the square root of your variance and your variance is the square of your standard deviation so if in the question they didn't give you this uh, the standard deviation but they give you the variance you first need to calculate the standard deviation before you can answer the question as well and we also know that it should be a random variable that has an infinite a range which will be from negative infinity to positive infinity because it goes 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 and with normal distribution as well you need to always remember that the values of your distribution or the belly calf will never touch your x axis at any point so therefore there's always those small margin of error in between the belly calf shape and your x axis so it will always go 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 up to negative infinity and go 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 up to positive infinity and it will never pass through your x axis at any point or it will never touch your x axis at any point and that is why you can see from this graph that your <clears throat> belly calf shape does not touch the X exists at any point in time. Okay. So how do we then standardize the values? We use this formula, which is the Z-score or the Z-distribution, by subtracting your observation, by subtracting your mean from the observation and dividing by the standard deviation. So the formula is X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, and that is your z score let's look at an example if x is distributed normally with the mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 50 the z value for x will be so now we need to be calculating the z value what have they given us they have given us the mean which is 100 the standard deviation which is 50 50 right then they also told us in the question that the z value for x, so they gave us the x value of 200. So we go and we substitute into the formula because we know the formula is z is equals to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation 
our x is 200, our mean is 100, and our standard deviation is 50. 200 minus 100 is 100 divided by 50 is 2, because 50 goes 2 times into 100. Therefore, our z value where x is 200 is 2. Then it also states that um, it's the same as if I have to interpret this, um, that the, with the x value of 200, it is two standard deviations away from the mean or above from the mean. If it was negative 2.0, we would say it is two standard deviation below the mean. If it's positive, we say it is above. Below, when it is negative and above, when it is positive. Usually, um, they don't ask you to interpret the value of the Z score. Unless some, sometimes somewhere they might ask you to do that, but they, you should be expected to know how to do some calculations in terms of finding the Z value because it's very important to know how to calculate the Z value because when we later on, when we want to calculate the probability of a standardized normal distribution value, we need to use the Z score to calculate our Z value and then use the Z value to go find the probability on the table, but we're going to do that later on. So this is very important. You need to know how to calculate the Z score. This is your exercise. For a particular group of scores, the population mean and the standard deviations are 25 and 5 respectively. So therefore it means five, 25 is population mean and 5 is your standard deviation. The Z score of the raw score of 19 is, so here they're giving us our X is equals to 19. So they're asking you to calculate Z. Since we're still learning, I'm going to give you the formula and you do the calculation. So we know that this is our mean and this is our standard deviation. Should be easy and quick to calculate. So should we type in the chat? Yes, you can type in in the chat box. While others are still calculating, you can give you can give your responses in the chat. I will keep an eye on the chat. Let me log in with my phone as well. So I can see the chat. Okay, I think now we've got a couple of answers. So what is our X?
X is 19. It's 19. And our mean? is 25. And our standard deviation? It's 5. So 19 minus 25. Minus 6. It's minus 6. Minus 6 divided by 5. Negative 1, comma 2. Negative 1, comma 2. So the row, the row score of 19 is 1.2 below the mean of 25. And that is option 3. And that's how easy it will be to answer questions if they ask you just to calculate the Z score. So you also need to pay attention to the type of questions that they are asking you. And also you can look at the options and see if it's zero point some number, zero point in, if it has very high numbers with negative numbers sometimes, then it means you need to be calculating the Z score. So, but you need to read the question carefully. Other questions that they can ask you will be general questions, um, including also whether do you know the properties of a normal distribution. So this we can do that together because I just told you just now and some of you might not have gone through the normal distribution content as yet. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to the normal probability, probability distribution? Statement number one says the Z score of a mean of a normal distribution is one. Is that correct? What did we know? What did we learn? We learned that the normal distribution is distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. So here they're asking, is this the mean of one, it's incorrect because we know that the Z score is distributed or the, the normal distribution, normal probability distribution is distributed with the mean of zero. So that would have been the one that is incorrect. But let's continue and look at the other steps because that will talk to the properties of the normal distribution. The smaller the value of the standard deviation, the narrow and the steeper the curve will be. Is that correct? We did this. Remember the graph I showed where we had the normal distribution like that and I drew another one and I said it will look like this. And we looked at if all of them have the same mean, we looked at the, the standard deviation. This is what they are asking. If the standard deviation is smaller, if this value is smaller, the kf will be narrow and steeper. Can you see that? It's narrow and it is steeper. So it's taller, steeper or taller. Let's call it that way. Right. That would be the correct one. The mean of a normal distribution can be any numerical value in the negative zero or the positive. So remember, we said it can go up to negative infinity and it can also go into positive infinity. And we know that normal distribution has the mean of zero there at that point. But it can also, remember the graph can also move, can shift. Do you still remember we spoke about this? The mean can also shift from being at that zero. It can move. It can move there. It can move there. It can move there. It can move. I, I, I told you that I don't know how to draw. So mind my calves the way they look, but I've tried. So it can move even if here is your zero. So we can have the mean there, the mean there, the mean there, the mean there as well, because the bigger the or the smaller the mean value. So the mean value can take any value. 
because it can take any value in the negative infinity to the positive infinity. So that is also correct. So we spoke about this as well, that it can it can shift to the left or to the right. Remember that? It's part of the introduction. What we didn't speak about is what we're going to talk about later on, where it talks about the area to the right of the mean. So we know that with normal distribution, we know that this is the mean, right? So it means the, um, with normal distribution, it splits the graph into two parts. And if it splits the graph into two parts, the other thing that we know about probabilities from, from what we, we have learned, the probabilities, the sum of all probabilities are equals to one. So if everything underneath the belly curve, if I'm going to tell you later on that everything underneath the belly curve is a probability, therefore it tells me that everything underneath the belly curve, if I add them all up, I should get the sum of one. Then if I split this belly curve into two, I am splitting it into two parts. So it means I'm dividing this into two. I'm dividing that one into two. This is the question that they are asking you. The area to the right of the mean of the standard deviation of the normal distribution will be 0, 0,5. So it tells me if I'm splitting one into two, I'm creating 0 0.5 this side, and I'm also creating 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is equals to one. And the area to the left, so this is to the left and this is to the right. It says the area to the right of the mean is 0 0.5 and the area to the left is 0 0.5, which means this is correct. So I'm also covering some of the things that I was not going to cover um, in the slides, but here yeah, I'm introducing them. And this is the nice way of introducing the probability later on. The last one, which is five, this is based on what you also know from the empirical rule that we did with probability, or not with probabilities, when we were looking at measures of variability. I think we also included in that discussion empirical rules, where we looked at whether do we have one standard deviation, two standard deviation away from the mean and three standard deviation away from the mean. Because with normal distribution, we still um, use the mean and the standard deviation, we can also still use the empirical rule because in terms of the empirical rule, it is a normal distribution because it tells you how far apart your values are away from the mean. Is it one standard deviation? Is it two standard deviation? Is it three standard deviation? Because of the empirical rule, we can also include it in the numer in the normal distribution chapter. So a question can be asked. 95% of the values of a normal distribution are two standard deviation away from the mean. What do you still recall on the empirical rule that we did when we were doing the uh, measures of variable no, variability, we said a one standard deviation is 68 percent, 95, two standard deviation, 99, three standard deviation. Do you still remember all those? And this is the correct statement. Because 95 percent of the values will be two standard deviations away from the mean. OK, so now let's talk about how do we find these probabilities that I have just introduced. So finding the probabilities, we're going to use the z-score to go find or locate the probability. So let's assume that I need to find the probability of A less than. The thing that you need to understand is in your module, we're always going to use the standardized normal distribution. We're always going to calculate the value of the less than or the value of the greater than. We will never, or you are not going to be asked to calculate 
the value of an exact probability where it is equal. Unless if you are doing math, uh, mathematical statistics, a pure statistic, um, and I think those who are doing 1501, I think you are expected to, to know that. No, because I looked, the only table you use is the cumulative standardized normal distribution. So you are also not expected at this, at your level, to know how to calculate the probability of an exact, especially when we calculate in the normal distribution probabilities. The probability of an exact will be the probability at the point, and that probability is different to the probability of a cumulative probability, which is the probability of a greater than or less than. There is a table that contains those probabilities, but usually the probability of an exact, sometimes it can also be equals to zero. But we're not going to touch on that because the session for today is to introduce you to this type of probabilities, which are your cumulative probabilities. So in order for us to calculate the probabilities, which are the areas underneath the curve, which is like, for example, the shaded red area, if I need to calculate the probability of a less than, I need to use the table. Now, the table that you have, both for 1501 or 1610 and, um, 1510 and 1610, your tables contains only the probability of Z less than a value. There are two sides two sides of the table. There is the positive side and the negative side. Both of them contains the probability of a less than. In the positive side, it contains the probability of the bigger side, right? The, in the positive, it contains the probability of the bigger side, which means it contains bigger probabilities. It contains large probabilities. As you can see with this large um, shaded area, this probability will be big as compared to that probability of the non-shaded area. The shaded area probability will be big. The negative side of the table, we're going to get there just now. So here I'm referring to the tables, right? The table, positive side of the tables, where we talk about the Z values, the positive side of the table contains the bigger side of the probabilities. The negative side of the table, if I didn't, I don't have a graph that shows, I will draw one. This is your normal distribution, which is your mean there, and I'm just going to shade this part. The negative side of the table will contain the smaller side of the probability, which is the smaller shadings, this part. So it will only contain this. If you are asked to find the probability of a less than value, easy to find on the table. You go to the table, you find the probability. If it's the Z value is negative, you go to the negative side, you find the probability, that's the value you are looking for. If the Z value is positive, you go to the Z table, you find the value of your positive um, probability, which will be the bigger value. Right. How does the table look? This is the type of a table that you're going to be using. It has the negative side of the Z and the positive side, as you can see there. Negative, positive. But your table also has the top part. Now, when we answered a question just now, we calculated the Z value and we said the Z value was minus 1.2. All what I ask you is add a zero. Always keep your Z value to two decimals. Therefore, it means round off correctly so that you can have your two decimals. So don't, don't drop decimal points before you get to your final answers. So round off correctly. So if I have a Z value of minus 1.2, how do I read the probability on the table? On the side, 
which is your left, on your left, you will have two digits, which are the first two digits. At the top, you will always have the last digit. So, if I read the Z table, I will read minus 1.2 on this left and 1 uh, or 0 at the top. So I must look for minus 1.2. So it will be somewhere there, minus 1.2. I don't have minus 1.2 here, but it will be somewhere there. And the value for minus 1.2 is Just give me a second, point eight four nine. So it will correspond with somewhere there it will be zero comma one one five one. I'm gonna keep it to decimal because I already saw on this side of the table what the value looks like. So to find the probability. Let's say I need to find this probability of Z less than, because I'm not going to look for Z equal, I'm looking for Z less than minus 1.20. And that probability I'll find minus 1.1 and 0 at the top. And that will be my probability, 0, 0,1151. That's how you will find the probability. If I need to find the probability of Z, less than 1.20 i will go to the positive side because my z value is positive i'll go to the positive side and i will look for 1.2 and i will look for zero at the end and that will give me 0, 0.8849 now if i take this probability 0, 0,1151 plus 0, 08849, they will give me one because the sum of both probabilities should be equals to one. And that is how you're going to read the table. Right? Easy. Easy, easy. Any questions? Any questions? Hello, Sister. Yes. Hello, Sister. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't understand here. I see these two tables now, this one which is uh, being shaded and this one which is not shaded so i don't understand where do you how do i get you say you, i can look at 1.2 to get a z negative if yeah. maybe you can explain I, i'm missing here okay so let's go back to our question so we went and we calculated let's say the question was asking us let's calculate the uh, find the probability let's let's call it find because the question will say, find the probability that X is less than 19. That's what we calculated, right? And we went and we calculated and we found that our Z value was minus 1,2. And then I say add 0 to the end because it needs to be two decimals. Now we need to go to the table. Regardless of the shaded areas, ignore the shaded. The most important thing is the value, whether is it a negative or a positive answer that you got. If it's negative like this, minus 1.2, so we come to the negative side. And we look for minus 1.2 on this side of the table. And there we have found it. Then we go to the top to look for the last digit. You're only looking at the last digit on the table. And our last digit is zero. So therefore it's the first column where they both meet. That is the probability. And that is what I, maybe I did even remove it. Oh, I did remove that. And that is what example that I have done with you right here. So then I turned around and I said, what if, what if when we calculated this, let's assume that we calculated this and we found not negative, but we found positive 1.20 as our answer. So we, go, we found it as a positive value. So we can't come to the negative side of the table. We need to go to the 
positive side where there are no negatives. So the positive, we look for 1.2 here. And then you look for a zero at the top, and that is the probability. So let's look at more examples so that you can have a feel and be able to know how to navigate this table or these questions. Okay, so let X represent the time it takes to download an image file from the internet. Suppose X is normal with the mean of 18 seconds and the standard deviation of five seconds, find the probability that X is less than 18.6. The key words here is this less than. That is very important. It will tell us how we're going to find the probability on the table. So for now, I'm introducing the less than. So how do we do that? We need to find the probability that Z is less than, and we write the formula of Z, which is X minus the mean divide by our standard deviation. We know what the standard deviation is, we know what the mean is, and we were given the X in the formula. So P times the Z of less than our X is 18.6 minus the mean of 18, divide by the standard deviation of five. And that gives us PZ less than 18.6 minus 18 equals divide by five equals 0, 0,12. 0, 0,12. So now I need to go find this probability on the table. You can just imagine I'm not putting anything in there because I'm finding the probability. This tells me I must go find this probability. So we go to the positive side. So I can see that the answer here is positive. It's 0, 0,12. So I'm going to find this 0, 0,1 on the positive side of the table, 0, 0,1 on the left, and at the top, I'm going to look for 0.2. Right? Let's go to the table. Okay, come to the table. We still remember what we zero. looking for. We're looking for 0, 0,12. So we're looking for 0, 0,1 there. Right? And the last the digit. Comma. Yes. And that will be 0, 0, 0,5478. There we go. Yes. Uh, it, C C C yes. On this table, how do I identify the positive and negative side? On the left hand side, you can see this one that we are on, right? Yes. It's positive because there is no negative, there is no minus in front of 0, 0,8, right? When you go to the top table, this is the other table, you can see there is the negative, the minus. Okay. Minus is your okay. negative, and where there is nothing is your positive. positive. Yes, okay, that's so how you identify. You look okay. at the answer you get on the Z. If it's negative, you go to the negative side of the table. If it's positive, you go to the positive side of the table. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh sorry. I need to clear. The ink. Okay, so that is what we just calculated right now. We standardized 18 to a zero. We standardized standard deviation of five to a one, and we found that our Z score was 0, 0,12, and that is how you would identify <coughs> the question. Okay, so that is the probability of the less than. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to show you again this because we've done this already. Um, how do we then find the probability of a greater than? Now, we spoke about the probability of a less than. Now, remember this, picture this. 
what I just showed you, the first example I said, the table contains the probability of the less than. So all these values that you see here, you're going to get the answer if the question is asking you to find the probability of a less than, always. If the question says less than, you just come to the table, you find the probability. For greater than, since the table that we are using to find the probability has the less than, to find the probability of a greater than, we're going to subtract the probability we see on the table from one. So we're going to always say one minus the table value. For all questions that are asking you to find the probability of greater than a value, we're going to subtract the value you see on the table from one. Suppose X is normally distributed with the mean of 18, the standard deviation of five, of five, find the probability of Z greater than 18. We've done this. It's the same question that we just did when we started with the exercise now on probabilities. So I'm not gonna go into details because we calculated that and we know that it was 0 0.18, or 1.2, sorry, <clears throat> 0 0.12. We calculated this probability and we found that it's 0 0.12. But now the question is, it is greater than. So because it's greater than, we need to go to the table and we know that we did find it. It was 0 0.12. 5478, we need to take this value and subtract it from 1. So we take 1 minus 0, 0.5478, and we find that the probability of x greater than 18.6 is 0, 0.4522. So what we do is we go and take the probability of a less than, and we subtract that from 1 so that we can find the complement probability. And that is how you're going to find the probability of greater than. Always subtract the table value from one. Let's look at more examples. Oh no, I don't have an example, but we're going to get to the examples now. Let's look at how we find the probability of between. Finding the probability of between is a little bit different to finding the probability of greater than. Remember, greater than one minus the value, and it's also different from finding the probability of equal uh, of less than because with less than we know that the value we see on the table is the value that we are looking for. For the between, we will use the same method as the less than. The value we see on the table for the b value or the second value, we're going to subtract it from. Uh, we're going to subtract the value of the first value on the table. So we say the probability of Z lies between A and B. So we're going to find the value of B. Ignore the, the what I'm saying is for the between, just ignore the signs. Ignore whether it's less than, less than or equal or less than. They mean one and the same thing. Ignore the sign. All what you need to do is make sure that the probability of this second part, which will be, which will mean we go to the table, we go find this first. So you first find this part on the table. You look at this, and then you go and find the value of this second table value. Then you subtract, you say the first table value minus the second table value. That's what we say with the less than. That's the easy way to remember how to answer the question with the less than. So with the less than, don't go and complicate your life by trying to figure out why, because we said it's less than and we do this and this other side, it's A less than. And don't worry about that. All what we need to always remember is write the value correctly because the smaller one needs to be first and then bigger one needs to be last. So we're going to go find the value of the bigger one first minus the value of the smaller one second, right? How do we do this? 
Suppose X is normally distributed with the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of 5. Find the probability that X lies between two values, 18 and 18.6. You can see that 18 comes first because it's small and 18.6 comes second because it's big. We go and find the probability. So we calculate Z score of 18 and we go and calculate Z score of uh, 18.6 and those are the Z score. So we can come back here and substitute and create a formula that looks like this. The probability of a Z lies between zero because for 18 it was zero and for 18.6 it was 0 0.12. So we have the probability of between here. How do we then go and find that? Uh, let, let me do it outside of this. I'm going to come here to the table, to this. So I could see that both of those probabilities that we're talking about, they are positive, right? They are all positive. Delete this. So let's go there. They are both positive. It's 0 and 0, 0,12. So they are both positive. So I'm going to work on the positive side of the table. So I know that I'm looking for the probability that Z lies between 0 and 0 0.12. Like I said, don't worry about the equal sign. It doesn't create any difference whether you use the less than or the less than or equal. Okay, so how do we then do this? Remember we said we're going to find the probability of the first one first, ne? So we can write it as the probability of Z less than 0, 0,12 minus the probability of the other side. Also, do not worry about the sign. We're just going to find the probability of the value that we find on the table, which we know that the probability that we find on the table is of less than zero, right? And because it's zero and we want two decimals, so I'm going to change my zero to 0, 0,00 because I need to leave it to two decimals. All right, so now I need to go and find the probability of Z of 0, 0,12. Remember the second one first, so I'm going to find the second one first. 0, 0,12, 0, 0,12, that is my probability, which is 0, 0,5478. And this side is 0, 0,00, so it's just the one on top, 0, 0,00, which is 0, 0,50 minus 0, 0,5000. And you go and calculate that, and that is what can go back to our PowerPoint. So we went and we found 0, 0,5478 minus 0, 0,500. 0, 0, and the answer we get is the probability of between is just those that are between 0 and 1, 2, and those are 0, 0,0478. So in order for us to find the probability of X that lies between 18 and 18.6, and that probability will be equals to 0, 0,0478. And that's how you find the probabilities. We're going to go into some exercises up until half past 10. But before that, sometimes you are expected also to find not only the probability of between or the probability of the less than or equal, or they might give you that probability. And then you need to be able to calculate it. <clears throat> so, I'm not sure if we will be able to um, look at when you are given the probability and then you need to go find the Z value because um, you want to, re to reverse engineer everything so that you go back and find the Z value so you can calculate your X. Probably we will have one of the examples just to show you. So let's look at more examples in terms of finding the probability of between.
Suppose x is normally distributed with the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of 5. Now, find the probability that x lies between 17.4 and 18. Okay, let's go and find that probability. Finding the probability, I always like to write it inside. So I know that I'm answering that question, finding the probability. So for 17, I'm going to find the probability that it lies because now I'm going to be calculating Z and I need to do also for 18. And, and the probability, now we can substitute our X is 17. 0.4 minus our mean of 18 divided by the standard deviation of 5 that lies between 18 minus 18 divided by 5. Therefore, I need to find the probability. What is 17 minus 18 divided by 5? 17.4 minus 18 is 0 0.6 divided by 5 is minus 0 0.12 minus 0 0.12 z less than 18 minus 18 is 0 so i don't even have to go and find divide by 5 because it's still gonna be 0 so now i have the probability of between and what i know is in order for me to answer the question, I will have to find the probability of the first one, of the second one first, which is Z less than 0, 0, 0, minus of the second one, the probability of Z less than minus 0, 0,12. So we need to go to the table. So we have 0 and 0, 0, 0, and we have, what do we have? Minus 0, 0,12. So we have the positive and the negative. So the first one, we're going to find it in the positive side, so, right? And we, we did find that, which was 0, 0, 0,05, 0, 0, right? So I can write that, 0, 0,5, 0, 0 minus the second one we need to go find it in the negative side so we go to the negative side of the table and we're looking for 0 comma 1 2 which is the same as what we have been using ah no not the same it's 0 comma so we're looking oh, for 0 right. comma 1 2 right so before it disappears Let's go to the last digit and go down and look for one. 0, 0,4522. Ah. 0,4522. 0, 0,12 is 0, 0,314. 0, 0, 0,13114. Am I writing is 0, 1314, 0, 0,1314, which then will be equals to 0, 0,4. You said it's 0, 0,4. Yeah, Sorry, Lizzie. Mm -hmm. You said zero, zero, you said negative zero comma one two. Oh, negative, yes. And negative then you are at negative yes. one comma two. Oh, sorry. We went to the negative one. We need to go to negative. Yeah, and it's negative zero comma one two. Ah, which yes, I see. Be. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that which is 0, 
four, five, double oh, two. Five, five. Yes. Oh, thank you for for five double two for picking that one up. Okay, and that is and that is what you will do. There will be a lot of mistakes because of these numbers. There are so many of them. So pay attention and double check your work as well. Um, that will be 0, 0,0478 as our answer of the between. And that is what you would have learned on how to use the normal distribution table, how to calculate the probabilities of between and how to calculate the probability of less than or the probability of a greater than. Remember, the probability of a less than the value you find on the table, that is the probability you are looking for. The probability of greater than will be one minus the value you find on the table. The probability of between will be the probability of Z less than B minus the probability of Z less than A, which means the value you find on the table for B minus the value you find on the table for A. Right, and that's how you do that. Um, maybe there will be one of one or two questions that we can look at where you are given the probability, but you need to go find the you need to reverse. So you are given the probability of z less than a value, which is zero comma one two one two. Let's assume that, and they're asking you find the value of x. What is the value of x? So we need to be able to move backwards as well to say if I know what the probability is, therefore it means I must come inside the table, look for 0, 0,1212, 0, comma. I hope there is 1212. 1212121212. Oh, we don't have 1212. And uh, let's assume that that was the question that they gave us. So we need to be able to go out and find the z value there and go up and find the last digit of the z value and say that is i'm going to change my question which is minus 1.17 so let's say that is 1.10 so we went and we found that and we know that now our z value which is the value of a a is minus 1.1 so if we know that A is 1.1, therefore we know that our Z is minus 1.1, which will be less than, and we can remove the less than and use equal X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And hopefully they would have given you those two and you just substitute the values and substitute the values and solve for the value of X. Um, let's hope that there will be one question that we can look at that looks like that. So let's go into the question mode or exercise mode. So these are the type of questions that we might get. Remember you're doing a multiple choice question and every statement with a multiple choice question, it means you need to evaluate that question in order to find the correct answer. So. All this question one to five, you need to go and find the answers for. Lucky enough with questions like this, they already have calculated your Z value. So you don't have to go and find Z minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. They already calculated that and they're telling you that the answer to that is those values. Uh, like zero, zero, minus one and one. And they are asking you what is the probability. So let's start with number one. We can do this one together. So you are going to use the tables and give me the answers. Like I said, probability of finding the exact should always be equals to zero for your cumulative normal distribution because that, right? So I'm going to. give you the first one. Uh, so the probability of Z equals to zero will be equals to zero. Let's ignore the first one, All right? Go to the second one. The second one says we need to find the probability of greater than zero. 
So because we want to find the probability that Z is greater than zero, therefore it means the value we find on the table, we need to subtract it. Because on the table, we're going to find the value of Z less than zero, right? That's what we're going to be finding. So, and remember, because we're working with two decimal tables, so we, we, you can put two decimals at the end. So let's go to the table and go find 0, 0, 0. It's 0, 0, 0,05, right? 0, 0,5, which is correct. Can you see that? Because that we will be one minus zero comma zero comma five zero zero, which is the same as zero comma five zero zero zero, which if to two decimals it will be zero comma five. Number three, find the probability of z less than zero. Is that correct or incorrect? That's decimal. correct. That's correct because that's what we just did here. Is the same value that we've just did. That is correct. Find the probability of Z less than minus one. Always remember that the probability of a Z less than a value is always going to be found by looking at the value or finding the value on the table. That's correct. That is correct. Okay. <clears throat> now, the last question says find the probability that X is uh, the probability that Z is greater than one, and it and they say is the same as one minus the probability of Z minus one. So this is incorrect. Right? It should be one minus the probability of z less than or equals to one. Less than or equal because of this, it will make it's that incorrect. one incorrect. But it's before correct. you before you jump to that conclusion that it is incorrect, what I will also suggest that you do is go and find the probability of z less than uh, z greater than one. So finding the probability of z greater than greater than one will be one minus the probability of Z less than one, right? You'll go to the table, you'll go find one, which is 0, 0,00, which is 0, 0,8413, right? 0, 0,8413, 8413. 1 minus 0, 0,8413. And you solve that. What is the answer? 1 minus 0, 0.8413, which is 0, 0,1587. And then you come to this side as well. You go find the probability of 1 minus. Because this said the answer to this should be the same as the answer to that. So one minus what is the probability of less than one comma zero minus? So we go to the negative side. We're looking for minus one and zero zero, which is zero comma one five eight seven. Right? One minus one minus zero comma one five eight seven, which is equal to and probably it is equals to zero comma eight four one three. And those two are not the same. You need to be very careful when you answer the questions like this as well. Just go and double check that 
you are able to evaluate each one of them and make sure that they are correct. So don't take any shortcuts because actually we could, we shouldn't even have went to the table because we did find that it was 0 0.158. So if they could have removed, you can see that, right? If they would have removed this minus, if they had removed this mi one minus the value there, and they ask you if it's correct, can you see that this will be the same? Because the answer to this is 0 0.1587. Therefore, the probability of Z greater than or equals to one is the same as 0 0.1587. You need to be very careful, especially when it comes to multiple choice questions. Please make sure that you evaluate each statement and not make any assumptions. And you can see the answers would have been correct and it would have been the correct one as well. But we know that, oh, did I mark it wrong there? We know that that is. So the incorrect one will be that one. So let's look at the next question. Consider the standard normal distribution of Z. Which one of the following probabilities is incorrect? I'm going to give you some few minutes. Just find the incorrect one. You can write your answer in the chat and then we will come back and do some feedback. Uh, Zoleka, yes, you can use it, and that is also, you can use it for the probability of the exact subtimes. It can also be useful for that if they ask you the probability that x is equal to uh, uh, a value, because that is the standardized, uh, it's not the cumulative probabilities, but the standardized probabilities. But you need to know how to use it properly. Otherwise, you must just rely on the negative and the positive table.
Are we winning? Nurses, I don't have a table. I will need to have a table first. So I will not win for now. Don't you have your study guide next to you, Justice? No, it is not with me now. OK. Yes. <coughs> Actually, they didn't send it. I need to type it, to print it. But it's online. You can download it online. OK, sis, list. Or on my UNISA. Yes. OK, I will do so. You must always remember to bring your tables every week from now on until 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 June ends, until all the sessions. Always we're going to be using introducing new tables. It's going to be I will. easier if you bring your tables with you so that you are able to work through them. I will do so, sis Liz. OK, are we winning or are we still calculating? Okay, no response. We are still calculating, ma'am. Gosh. Guys, you need to respond. We are still calculating. All right, I'll give you more extra mm -hmm. more time. Additional time. Are we done? Let's see. Mm. Do we have any response on the chat? Nada, next. Are you guys struggling? Are you winning? Are you not sure? Option five. So Manessa says, option five. Let's, <coughs> let's see. Let's see. So option number one, remember, like I said, very tricky questions. You need to evaluate each one of them and make sure that they are correct. So to answer this first one, we need to go find 
1 minus the value we find on the table because it's greater than. So we're going to minus 2.80, right? So we come to the negative side of the table. Delete all this. Negative 2.8. Negative 2.8 and 0 is at the top. And that is 0, 0,0026. Agree? Zero comma zero zero two six, and the answer here will be one minus one minus point zero zero two six is equals to zero comma nine zero comma nine nine seven zero comma nine nine seven four. Right, yes. that yes. is that one. So this one is a little bit tricky as well because it says one minus the probability of greater than two positive uh, 2.8, right? So this we treat it as one minus and we convert this because we don't have any value on the table that is greater than. So we say one minus the probability we're going to find on the table, which is of less than 2.8. So it means we go to the positive side of the table and we go find one minus one minus because that is always there one minus one minus is that part that is the one minus and i just expand this into one minus the probability of a less that so we go and find on the positive side 2.8 so we go to the positive side of the table 0 0.9974 so we'll use this column, 0, 0,9974, right? 0, 0, 0,9974, right? And that is 1 minus 0, 0,0026, which is equal to 0, 0,9974. So therefore, this is correct. See how tricky it is? But they would have tricked you by looking at this. And you are in the exam, you would panic and you'll say, oh, yes, that is the incorrect one. And you stop working throughout the whole session uh, on other options because you would have assumed that that is not correct. So that is correct. Number two, the probability that z is less than negative 2.11 we can go and find this value on the table and finding the value we go to the negative side of the table so we go negative side of the table and remember what we're looking for forgot minus 2.1 Zero, zero at the top, so it means we're going to always use the first column. So the first column is where it is zero, 2.1. We're looking for 2.1, right? Negative 2.1. You see, I have to double check because the last time I made it an error because I didn't double check my work, uh, which is 0, 0, 0,0179. Right. And then we know that this is 0, 0,0179. This side, it says it is le uh, greater than. So with greater than, we know that it's 1 minus the probability of Z less than 2.1. So we need to go to the positive side and look for 2.1. So go to the positive side. And we know that we're looking at the first column. So 2.1 is 0, 0,9821. So we go there. We say 1 minus 0, 0,9821, which is equal to, if we calculate that, it will be 1 minus point. 9821, which is equals to 0, 0,0179. One. 
which is the same. So the left hand side is the same as the right hand side. OK, the next one is the between. So between we know in order for us to find between, we're going to find this first Z less than zero comma zero zero and minus the probability of Z less than minus 2.80. And that is equals to Let's put them on the line like that. I'm going to do it like this. OK. So that I am able to calculate correctly. So we're going to find the on the positive and on the negative. So let's first start on the positive because it's 0, 0, 0, which is 0, 0,500. So that will be 0, 0,5. 0, 0, minus, and on the negative, 2.8. Did we find that? I don't have to go to the table because some of these things we went and we found them, which was that value of, uh, because we're going to the negative side. When we found this value, we said it was 1 minus the probability of Z less than minus 2.8. That's what we did, and which is the same as this one. So I'm just going to use that value which is 0, 0,0026, which is equals to, so you just say 0 0.5000 minus 0 0.0026 is equals to 0, 0,4949. Yeah. Which is the same, which is the same which is correct. Then we go to number four. Also number four says the probability of between. So we're going to find the probability of the second one first, Z of less than 2.1 minus the probability of Z less than minus 2.8. So we did find the probability of Z 2.8. We did find the probability of Z less than 2.1, which we did here, remember? And we found that was 0, 0,9821. So I don't have to go to the table because some of these values, as you go along, you, are, you have already found them. Uh, so because this was less than 2.1 and it's positive, that is less than 2.1, which was positive, we did find that was 0, 0,9821. Otherwise, you can go to the table and go find 0 0.221 and go there and find that is 0, 0,9821. Or you can just rely on the information you used previously. Minus, and we did find this. I'm not going to go to the table. We said it was 0, 0,0026, and that is equals to... 0.9821 minus 0.0026 equals 0.9795, which that is correct. That's why I don't like, I don't enjoy doing multiple choice questions because you work very hard. Five times as much because now I should have been on question number five of my exam paper. I'm still on question two. Hi, this is a struggle. So number five, we need to find the probability of the second one, which is Z less than 2.1 minus of the first one, which is the probability of Z less than zero. Like I said, you just ignore those greater than and less than. And for the exercises, um, you don't need to worry too much about them. Um, <clears throat> all you just need to remember is take the sec the first, the second one minus the first, 
and that's it. You will know how to answer these questions, and that is the base. Your e your your e tutor will will teach you how to do or read these things normally, like a normal statistician. Me, I'm giving you the skills. <laughs> I'm giving you the skills on how to answer your questions. That's it. Okay. If it means showing new shortcuts, I do that because I want to see you succeed. Okay, so let's see. Um, Two point one, we did find that it was zero comma nine, zero comma nine eight two one minus, and for zero we didn't. Oh, we did find it. It was zero comma zero five. Remember, we did find the probability of less than zero. And it is uh, 0, 0,5005. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, equals. So 98.9821 minus 0, 0.5000 0, 0, 0, is equals to 0, 0.48. To one, which makes number five incorrect. Happiness. Um, yes, Zolega, yes, Zolega, yes, 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 yes. I can see that most of you knows how to do these things. So it's going to be, I'm going to skip this one because you can take a screenshot of it um, because you, you already know how to answer some of these questions like this. So I want to get to something different. So this is another question. You can take a screenshot of it um, or otherwise you can come back to the recording to look at exercise number three. And if you're still not getting it right, you can talk to me on WhatsApp as well. Here is another question that would surprise you. So here they say the shaded area underneath the curve following a standardized normal distribution curve is equals to, and they give you the shaded area. So what they did here is they give you the Z values, right? Because the shaded area, you always need to remember that the shaded area is the same as probability. So when they talk about shaded area or area underneath the curve and all those things, think about it as the probabilities. So <clears throat> looking at the values here that we have, since they didn't give us the mean, the standard deviation, or they didn't tell us it's between this and that, but we can read from this that this is our Z lies between those two values and we can find the probability of that. That's as easy as it is. You can see that I've just implemented the question on top of what they just gave us to answer because they just want to know what is the probability. Oh, come on. What is the probability of the value between two values, right? So what we do, we go to the probability of Z less than 1.25 minus the probability of Z less than 0, 0,00. This site, I don't even have to now look at the table because we've been using it. Now I know that is 0, 0,05. Now this other site, we need to go to the table. So let's go to the table, minus one. Let's go back, I must remember. 1,25, 1,25. It's on the positive side. We're looking for 1,2. And then at the top, we're looking for 5. I always do it that way because we're working online. When I scroll, it hides all the other values. And the answer is 0,89. 0, 0,89. Four, four. And that is e equals to zero comma eight nine four four. And then we answer the question. Easy, right? 
0.8944 minus 0 0.5000 equals 0 0.39 Four, four, which is option number four. That is how you will answer the question. Because um, at the end of the day, you're going to look at this question and panic because they didn't ask you what is the probability. They are not giving you the Z values. They just give you the graph and they expect you to know what to do with this kind of a question. So you just need to quickly visualize it in your mind to say, oh, but then they gave us the Z values here, because if they are asking us to find the area underneath the curve, it means they're asking us to find the probabilities and this value should be the Z values because they didn't give me the mean and the standard deviation. So it means they're not expecting me to calculate the mean and the standard deviation to answer this question, to find the Z because they gave me my Z values. Okay, and you just say, oh, it's, it's it's the shaded area is between two values. So you just put the probability of between two values and answer the question, like there's the probability of between. So this is another question. Uh, do I wanna work through this? Um, we've done more questions relating to probabilities that look like this, but let's look at this. Suppose X is normally distributed with the mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 20. The probability that X is greater than 145 is. So they have given you the mean, they have given you the standard deviation, they have given you your X of greater than. And they are asking you to find the probability that X is greater than 145. And to answer this question, we know that it will be 1 minus the probability that Z lies. Oh, sorry. The probability that Z is greater than 145, uh, not 145, but Z is greater than our X minus our mean divided by the standard deviation, which we also know that it will be 1 minus the probability of Z less than our X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Why I'm doing all these things? It's because it's greater than, and we know with the greater than, we'll eventually have the answer like this. So we can also substitute from there 145 if you want, or you can substitute into the next question. Otherwise, you can leave it as the question as it is, as you practice along. So 1 minus the probability that Z is less than, 145 minus the mean of 100 divided by the standard deviation of 20. And you go and calculate 1 minus the probability of Z less than what is 145 minus 100 is 45. Divide by 20, it is 2,25. 2,25. Two so we're going to go to the table on the positive side and look for 2,2 and then at the top look for 5 where they both meet which is 0, 0,9878 and we come to that 1 minus 0, 9878 and the answer is 1 minus 0.9878 equal 0, 0,01222 0, and that's how you will answer questions This I like for multiple choice questions because then it's one question. I need to choose which one is correct based on the answer. And I had to calculate it once, not like the others. 
Okay, I'm not. Oh, yes, this is one of those questions that I was referring to, to say they give you the probability, but they don't give you all the things that you need. And they ask you to find either X or the standard deviation or the mean or any of those values. So they say here, the probability that X lie or X is less than A is given by that, which is 0 0.1515. And it is the area underneath the curve of a random variable x with the mean of 30 and the variance of 16. The value taken by is equals to. So what is our x? That's what they are asking us here. All right, so what else have they given us? They've given us the probability. So we can use this probability to go find the z value because we know our Z formula is X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we're looking for the X. We have the probability, so it means we can find the value. So we know that the probability of Z less than A is 0, 0,1515. I'm, I'm, I'm using this scenario because they told me that that is the probability of that because I know that this is the probability of X less than that x less than a which is the same when i go to the table i'm using z not x i use the z and i know that to find the value of a i use this formula this formula finds me the value of a right that's all what i know for now so since i know that a gives me this therefore it means i need to find what this a value is, that gives me this 0, 0,18. So let's reverse engineer. Let's go find this value here. Let's go find this a. By using 0, 0,1, and this is the value inside the table, right? That is the value inside, not outside, inside. So we go in to the negative side because we know that on the positive side of the table, these are big probabilities. We're looking for one, 0, 0,15. So it cannot be on the positive side. It will be on the negative side. So we're looking for 0, 0,1. Let me write it here. 0, 0,1. 515. That's what we're looking for inside the table. Any of these values should be 151, 0, 0, 1, 13, 15, 15, 15. There is our probability that we were given. Now we need to go out and collect our first two digits, which is minus 0, 0,1. I'm gonna go and write them here. So now we have our value. So we know that Z of less than minus one comma, what did we get? One comma zero, one comma zero, but it's not the end. I need to go out, up to get my last digit. Always remember that, right? that the table has, or the Z value has three digits. Oh, sorry, two, two digits after the comma. So that is three, and that is, three is the same as 0, 0,15, one five. So it means my Z value, I have my Z. Let's substitute into the formula. Our Z is minus 1,03, which is equals to X is what we are looking for, minus the mean. They told us that the mean is 30. They also gave us the standard deviation. Nope, they gave us the variance. How do we find the standard deviation? Standard deviation is the square root of the variance, and the variance is 16. Therefore, the standard deviation is 4, and then it is 4. And we use met multiply because it's dividing, so we can multiply. 4 times minus 1, 0, 3 is equals to x minus 30 
therefore x will be equal to what is 4 times 0 0.103 which is negative or it's negative 0 comma negative 0 comma 4 1 2 0 and this is minus, so when it moves this side, it becomes positive. So that will be 30 minus, oh, minus 0 0.412 plus 30 will be 0.4. Will be equals to, uh, I'm calculating something wrong here, so um, what have I done wrong? Pardon? 25,88. Why is my thing so wrong? Is there something that I did wrong? Let's see. Point one. Oh, three. Four times negative 1.03 is negative 4.12. Yes, I see that I did something wrong. That's why I'm. So it is negative 4.12. Oh. And the answer is 25.88. And that's how you will answer the question. So we left with three minutes. I just want to scroll through some of the questions that I've included in the notes. Notes are downloadable from the uh, My Unisa site uh, where you access the, the recordings. Um, some of the question might look like this. Here they gave you the Z value as well. If you look at this, oh, let's look at this one as well. So it says given that Z is normal, or is standardized normal distribution, what is the value of Z? So here we're looking for the Z value such that the area to the right of Z is 0, 0,261. So we must also be mindful of words like that. The area to the right, it means the area greater than. Let me not put the equal sign. The area to the right, it means the area greater than the area to the left, it means less than. So since they say the area to the right greater than, so to the right, the area to the right, which means it's greater than, they are telling us that this area here is is 0, 0,2061. All what we know is in order for us to find this 0, 0,021, we had to do P minus the probability of Z less than A. And that would have given us 0, 0,2061. That is this area here based on that formula. Remember? For the greater than, we say 1 minus the value on the table, and that gives us the probability. So in order for us to know what that value of A is, we need to use this probability that we have, but we need to go and subtract it from 0 so that, sorry, from 1, so that we can find the actual value of Z. If we use this, let's go. It's 0, 0,2061. So we go and look for pos uh, 0, 0,2, let's delete this, 0, 0,2061 there. If we take this and go out, which is 0, 0,82 minus 0, 0,82, if we say the answer is minus 0, 0,82, if we say it like this, we will get it all wrong because we're going to assume that the value we find on this, we found it by using minus 0, 0,8, and then we went and found this probability. This will be incorrect. What should be correct should be, we need to go back 
one way. We need to substitute that into this. So we need to go find this value. So we know that this is what we have, but we know that this, we found it by finding one minus zero, um, probability of Z less than A is equals to zero comma two zero six one. We found it by using that, and that is the value we found on the table. So in order for us to find this on the table, we're going to say 1 minus 0, 0,2061 is equals to the probability of Z less than A, because that is the value we used on the table, and that will be the probability that we, 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 we found on the table was 1 minus 2061, which is 1 minus 0 0.2061, which is equals to 0, 0,79339. That is the value that we used. So we need to go to the table and find this value. 0, 0,79. So we go there on the positive side because it's 0, 0,7. It's a bigger probability. So we come here, 0, 0,79, 7678, 79. Now I forgot what else was there. 7939, seven, let's write it down. 0, 0,7939, so that we know exactly what we're looking for. 7939, which is that value. So we go out 0, 0,8, go out 2. So the answer we have our A, which is what we're looking for, the value of Z. So our Z of greater than 0, 0,82. So the answer we're looking for is actually number B. And that is how you will answer the questions. OK, any questions, any questions before or oh, before I get to the questions, uh, because I can see that we are two minutes over, but it's fine. Um, <clears throat> there are other questions. Uh, you need to also calculate your X. You are given the Z value. So now here you just substitute into the formula. You will just substitute x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation you have the z value you just substitute the z value you have your standard deviation and you have your mean you just substitute and find the value of x which is straightforward the other question you need to calculate the probability of x but here you are given the variance so you need to calculate the probability that z is less than x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and remember this is the variance you're going to first find the square root of your variance and it is less than the value you find on the table that will be the value you find on the table z of less than a is the same as the value you find on the table question number 10 was going to ask you to calculate the probability of student failing so they gave you the standard deviation and the mean, don't get confused even if they give you in percentage form. You can use the percentage or you can convert this to a decimal. This is 0, 0.56 and this is 0, 0.04. What is a percentage of a fail? A fail is anyone who gets less than 50, which is 49 and below. That is a fail. Or you can use 50. I'm not sure which one now. What is the probability of a pass? Pass is more than 50. Fail is less than 50, or maybe you can say the probability of less than a 50 uh, and see if you get any of those questions there, which is very tricky now. Is, do you use a 50 for a fail or do you use a, um, a, four, a 49? Uh, you can check both and see if any of those probabilities you do get. And then the last one also is asking you to calculate the probability of at most. Uh, at most is less than, remember, at most, at least, at most is less than. 
or equal, but we, you can just use the less than and then calculate the probability. And that is everything you needed to know about continuous normal distribution probabilities or probability distributions. Are there any questions? Please remember to complete the register. Those who haven't completed. Register your phone, OK, I'm going to repost it because I think something went Ooh, ah, with my link. Remember to complete the register, those who can access the register. Let me know. Uh, as I indicated, this is I mm -hmm. couldn't uh, use the, 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 the laptop. So I'm struggling to access the register here. OK. I'll put it. No, you want to say guest here. OK. Sorry? You want since you are a guest here. You need to log in with your 